Almost 200 students from 17 different Vermont schools descended on Spalding High School in Barrie to participate in the Vermont Historical Society's History Day. Every year, National History Day selects a theme that all topics have to fit under, and this year's theme is Triumph and Tragedy in History. So students can explore topics from a local, state, national, world level that explore this theme. They can choose uh, to focus on the tragedy side or on the triumph side. In many cases, topics kind of embody both triumph and tragedy. There are four different types of projects that students can do. They can write papers, they can create exhibits, which is what are here, they can uh, do performances, or they can create a documentary. Wilma Rudolph had a reputation saying that if you blinked, you could miss her. People who went to see her run were not supposed to blink, but they could miss her. What was your favorite thing about doing this? What did you like about it? Um, I like to find out about her life and what went on with her and how she survived everything. I did my paper on the Bradboro Retreat in the 19th century. It was then called the Vermont Asylum for the Insane. And I did it because I just have a lot of interest in psychology. And I um, thought it would be a good opportunity to learn more about that and combine it with my interest in local history. I mean, when I read stuff in social studies class, it's often not very interesting. And I think, I mean, you can have the most scholarly essay in the world, but no one's going to read it if it's not interesting. So I decided, you know, historical fiction is a great opportunity to, to give readers that, that learning experience as well as I entertain them. I think it's an amazing program. I think um, all the, the venues these kids can use to learn about history, the performances, the papers, the documentaries, um, the exhibits, uh, it looks like a lot of fun for these kids. The ones, and I think that the biggest challenge is getting them interested in it. And I just wish more teachers would take advantage of it. What's the most significant thing about that we should remember about Paul and that Eve? He, that he turned blind and he never ever gave up. He kept doing when he turned what? blind, he never gave up. Yeah. Students' projects are judged by a group of dedicated volunteers. Well, we certainly are looking for originality. We're looking for depth of, uh, of study. Uh, we're looking for uh, accuracy. Uh, we're looking for uh, what the student uh, has derived from uh, their work on a particular project. And we're also looking why they chose the uh, topic that they chose. I'm a retired elementary teacher and still love students and their learning and most impressed with the results of their efforts. I just find it's, it's stimulating and it's exciting. Mm. Hello. Hello, is this Sherry McCullough? Yes, this is she. I am proud to say that you have won the contest. You will be the first teacher in space. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Who was that, hon? It was NASA. I won. Good job, honey. I'm so proud of you. I'm really glad you're getting a chance to live your dream. Thank you so much. Daddy, I need you. I'm coming, Caroline. I love space, and I love to look at it all the time. It is so mysterious. I can only imagine what it'll be like when I'm actually in a spaceship. It, it was neat. It was very creative, and it brought across a real sort of spirit um, to what was going on. Our project is about the 1918 influenza and how the influenza helped to improve the health care in Vermont by being a tragic event but bringing on the triumph that health care in Vermont was able to improve and become better so for the future there would be less chance of it happening again. We chose it out of a book that we read and that it was about the influenza and it told us that over 40 million people had died yet we hadn't really heard a lot about it. So we thought it was really intriguing so we decided to do our topic on that. What was the most surprising thing that you learned from this project? Um, well, for me, um, it could be different for Leah, but for me, I just was surprised. You can see by the graph the um, deaths in 1917 and 1919 and 1918, and how in 1918 the deaths spiked for actually the ages like 20 to 40, and that surprised me because when I think of diseases and getting sick, I think of really young children and r the elderly. and. That wasn't the case with the influence that actually hit the, the people who were in the prime of their life. And that kind of surprised me because I wasn't expecting that at all. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, exhibit is the written material, original, clear. Oh my God, I thought it was fabulous. The symbolism was just phenomenal yeah, for I a kid so. that age. Presentation. Yeah. Oh my God. The judges are uh, evaluating the projects for their historical uh, content. That's the most important piece because this is an education program first and a contest second. They spend a lot of time writing constructive criticism on the comment sheet. So every student gets back uh, a good bit of written feedback uh, from the judges. So we're not even talking about, well, who's going to be the winner yet. We're just grading each individual exhibit based on our yellow comment sheets, the papers, and the bibliography. Each of us made our own yellow sheets, and then we are now discussing what we wrote down. They're making sure that the students uh, have done a wide array of research and that the students are actually being historians and doing their, applying their own interpretation uh, and showing, putting the topic into context, showing that it's historically significant. Um, that's what they're evaluating for. Being a teacher myself and, and having my students do films uh, and, and do creative things takes them right out of the textbook and out of lectures and so on and where they personally can make it make a difference and, and learn something in their mind and end up learning more than actually the teacher knows, which, which is good. And I think it gives a lot of self-confidence to young people that they know. In certain cases, they know more than the teacher does. It's a self-discovery process. They uncover it, they develop it, they take joy in it, and we can share in that discovery process and that joy, and what a thrill that is. These kids are great. It's a lot for them to deliberate on. Uh, it's a really tough job to be a judge. You've done a terrific job on a terrific range of Vermont history and American history and international history topics. I think you took good advantage of primary sources locally at UVM, at VHS, other collections that were available to you. And you've come to us from all over the state. There are close to 200 of you here today, and that's pretty good for a state of Vermont size. We were, you should applaud yourselves, absolutely. Some students are even selected to compete on a national level. National History Day takes place in June of every year at the University of Maryland. And uh, we typically send 30 to 35 students there every year. They compete. Um, there's about 1,000 kids from all over the country come down there, and it's just a big celebration of students doing history. The Vermont Historical Society has been hosting uh, the Vermont History Day contest since the mid 80s uh, and they really we really believe that this is um, a new way to teach history a more in-depth rich way to teach history it gets teachers and students to look outside the textbooks uh, really go in depth on projects that interest them uh, kids can use their creative talents so we really feel like it's a great way for kids to get engaged in the past yeah.